Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Curl Space Program 0.23.5. And in the previous episode, we managed to get an asteroid in orbit around Kerbin. It was going to be on a flyby, but we managed to get it into orbit. And we also managed to completely fail on some scientific missions. Now, the fact that we have gotten an asteroid into orbit has led to much speculation both in the press and among the scientific community on Kerbin. Uh, it has become apparent that it is not impossible to move these asteroids around. And the speculation in the press has been that they are actually being sent here. These asteroids are actually the act of some malicious entity, possibly from Jewel, which has a lot of material floating around in its orbit, uh, plenty of moons with, with uh, rocks to spare and that they are boosting those rocks at us. Uh, so that's one source of speculation. Another source of speculation is that they're actually coming from Duna's moon Ike, which seems to have the right color, but perhaps not the right uh, composition. So that speculation about uh, coming from Ike comes from the scientific community and they want to try and get a surface sample off of asteroids. Uh, not just this one, because it might be that this one is from Ike, but another one might not be. So, from a number of asteroids, and then also send a mission to Ike to check out the surface of Ike to see if the composition matches. So, that's uh, the most pressing plan. But we also have to continue to defend Kerbin against the asteroids, of which there are a lot of these guys. A lot of them floating around, and some of them are uh, quite heavy. The next one to arrive, let me just take a look at my handy list. The next one to arrive is IHY-504, this guy. And this one is due to arrive in 15 hours, so we need to mobilize to try and uh, push that one around. It might be totally missing Kerbin. It does have an escape. Uh, and that's probably the most likely scenario, but it could also be smacking right into Kerbin because it doesn't have a periapsis. So we have to take that into account as well. The whole orbit projection system isn't particularly the most reliable thing ever. So we're looking at that first, but we have other missions. We need to send uh, somebody up to get a surface sample off of the asteroid Higgs. We have to decide what to do about the other asteroid that we've sort of uh, got a grip on. Uh, we've plotted a possible... Uh, well, it's already past this uh, particular maneuver, but we could probably still do a maneuver to push it into current sphere of influence if we want to get a hold of it. And I calculated that we had the Delta V to do such a thing. But we still have to decide whether we want to do it. Now it seems more likely that we will do it, but it's not the priority. Let's go to the VAB and check out what we can do with the new parts we purchased in the previous episode that will help us to perhaps deal with the new asteroid that's coming our way, the IHY-504. Now unlike the robotic missions, I think it's it would be better to get a Kerbal over there right away. So we're going to, uh, even though it's a little bit more mass, uh, we're going to have a Kerbal on, and let's make sure we have a reaction wheel as well, but maybe maybe we should make this... Uh, well... The problem is this uh, reaction wheel has a mass of 0.3, this one has a 0.2, so I'm thinking of actually maybe making this bigger, but, but let's, let's, let's go for 0.3 for now. And let's get the claw on immediately. Okay. Now, uh, somebody noted that the claw has, um, oh, I don't know, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, it's got a pivot, yeah, the pivot point. And so, maybe we don't need as much RCS as I thought we did. So, I'm going to keep that in mind. But, otherwise, uh, let me make sure I'm uh, tallying this stuff in, up in my head. This is about one ton right now. Uh, we do need to get our, our guy back home. Hmm. Yeah, let, let's let say that uh, most of 
the resources on this stage should be getting him back home. And let's put some docking ports in the middle of this so that other other things can dock to this claw, right? Uh, or do we not have docking ports yet? Oh, we don't have docking ports yet. Okay, well there goes that idea. Let's just put some emergency solar panels on the side here. Alright, so no docking ports. That puts a little bit of a crimp on the plan. Alright, so that's that's a good start, but we need the pusher stage. So there's return stuff and we need some parachutes on then. Uh, lights before I forget. Let's get two of these like this and orient them a little bit more like so. And this is uh, asteroid mission, so lights on. So now, how much stuff can we put on to push an asteroid around? That is the question. We could do with some more power here. Uh, how about some radial batteries on the side and those solar panels, just two of them. Covering up the logo, but... Oh well. Now, let's smooth out the lines a bit. Oh, you know what? Maybe this one... I'll smooth... Uh, well, the, these things are poking out quite a lot as it is. Maybe that's not unreasonable. I don't want the rocket to get too tall, you see. So... Maybe we should reconsider the whole idea of having just one rocket. The, the ISP of these are pretty good compared to this. But maybe having four of those... Well, at least save me the tedium. How much gimbling do we have? One degree, 0.5 degrees. Gimbling, I think, is important. Just for sheer aim. And I'm gonna up this to six of these. Okay, so that's, that's it for pusher stages. But now we need to think about our transit stage. Now before I had them all in line, but I think the transit stage should be set separately off to the side. So we don't burn any of this for for transit. We'll set this transit stage offline like this. And for the transit stage we'll have high ISP instead of high thrust. set those as low as we can and since they're off the side struts are probably advisable what's the ISP of the center engine oh I guess we could do that and since the ISP of the center engine is the same as for these maybe we can just dump these engines why even have the engines We'll just have fuel lines feeding into this one like this. And then dump the tanks. Okay. So, time for me to calculate how much I've actually got in here. Calculators out. Okay, so I'm estimating the transit stage to have about 1,500, so these tanks out here, then they get dropped off, and then this one has about 2,000, this one has about 2,500, something along those lines. And then this tank is a purely for the return journey. So those are my calculations. This whole assembly is about 40 tons. 
Now, what do we put at the bottom of it? We've got we've got mainsails now. I guess it's time to use them. Maybe we need a little bit more RCS power here. Uh, well, if we're gonna put the, the ports here, we should just put these here as well, like that. And perhaps some solar panels while I'm at it. Let's put those here. And before I forget, action group the solar panels. So we've got all that done. Let's see about this launcher. Obviously with these pods here, we should probably go with uh, four-way symmetry of some kind around the main launcher stack. This is pretty powerful as it is. Let's see... Plus six. Oh no, not times six. This stack can definitely get itself up. And in fact, I think I should uh, toss on another tank at the bottom here. Ah, we don't have the big nose cone, so we're gonna have to do... That sort of thing. Hmm... A bit underwhelming for... for a mainsail stack. How much have we got here? We've only got uh, 72 tons. That's half of what the mainsail can carry. Let me think about this. We want to add a little bit more... Oh wait, we've got these? Oh... So in the center stack, I'm not gonna have a mainsail. In the center stack... I'm gonna have my favorite configuration. Aha! So this is my sort of Falcon 9 configuration with a non-gimbling engine at the center. Though I guess we could just go with uh, with the gimbling engines after all. Okay. So we've got that configuration done. That's my preferred one, and it's much more efficient than having a... Shall we just have a, like a Falcon 9 Heavy sort of thing? Maybe that'd be best. It looks a little bit ungainly because it's so wide. But that'll keep the engine safe. Perhaps instead of just a Falcon 9 Heavy, we should uh, go with... Uh, more uh, a four-way symmetry sort of thing. This thing is gonna get off the ground really fast. I'm so glad I don't have FAR installed on this. FAR would make this very bad. This is probably inadvisable anyway, folks. Um, actually, maybe we should make uh, more robust boosters. I mean, these things can carry quite a lot. These things, uh, altogether, this is a capable of carrying a 180 tons. Right now, we've got 72 plus 18, 90 tons on top of it. And, and of course, there's a little bit of uh, mass on the engines themselves. But we can carry more than this. And okay, that's going to be 81 if I put 8 of them. That looks ugly. That looks ugly. All right, let's let's do four-way symmetry with the with this this Falcon 9 uh, configuration. There are better ways to separate them. I don't know. This this is not the right attachment points, but there are parts that I haven't unlocked that would work better than what I've got right now with this tank here. I mean, I know they've they've got the new joint system and everything, but this is a pretty. There's gonna be serious stress involved in this particular launch. K 
Okay, uh, there's no point not having fuel lines. Let's have these go here. And then this tank go into there. Ah, right, uh, let's have some more control over this whole thing. I don't like the look of these anyway. And we are actually undermasked right now. Maybe I should have parachutes on everything. But let's focus on what we really need first. And that's the Separatrons. Where are you Separatrons? There you are. Now the staging is of course all wrong. So, oh, well, the 32 engines, definitely. By the way, we're going to have a lot of engines at the bottom of this. Uh, okay, so... These four, yeah. Oh, heck, all of them, yeah. Then the boosters go off, have their parachutes and separatrons. This could go very badly. This is a very, very powerful rocket, as you'll soon see. So we'll ignite the rockets and do launch properly. Have, uh, oh god, don't do that. No, come on, give me back my... <laughs> Uh, alright, it's good. And so we'll ignite first and then launch. And one last thing, I need to verify how much Delta V we have here. Okay, so by my calculations, the booster stage, the four boosters, have about 2,900 Delta V. The center stack has another 3,300, uh, approximately. And so, I mean, lots of rounding went into this, but it was always in the conservative direction. So, we are talking about, after getting into orbit, having about 2,000 Delta V left. And so that's quite a lot. That means not only will we be able to boost to the moon, we could boost to Jewel, perhaps, and still have this whole thing on top still quite all right. And this is going to get off the ground pretty quickly, hopefully. If I, I mean, unless uh, early morning I'm not entirely sure I'm doing the math right, but I think I think I'm I'm confident that this is going to be a pretty spectacular liftoff. Okay, well, let's try it out. Uh, just getting into orbit first, and the goal is that uh, that that little oh, we shouldn't get into orbit just yet. So this is definitely an asteroid defense launcher, so let's call it 85. And we have to, I guess we have to let that asteroid come in, or not. Let's see what it does, and judging from the way it enters the Kerbin system, then we'll have to decide how to launch at it. Actually, it occurs to me, maybe if we jump to one of these things and target IHY-504, we will be able to see the way it's entering the Kerbin system. So I'm going to actually jump to our existing asteroid here in orbit and see whether we can uh, figure out the trajectory of IHY-504. By the way, our new launcher, huge though it is, still does not have a mass greater than this asteroid. So uh, so it's it's an impressive, impressive launcher, but it's still not quite as heavy as that asteroid. Okay, um, Kerbin Encounter. Well, at least here we see that the Kerbin Encounter isn't a Kerbin Escape. 
And it does look like it's smashing into Kerbin, doesn't it? Yeah. So this this is this is one that we will definitely have to tackle. And you know what? We've got a man mission in orbit. Let me switch to uh, Asteroid Defense 2 it is, I think. Uh, if I can get to it. And maybe we can plot to see what kind of intercept we can get. So here's Lubas Kerman who has been hanging out with Asteroid Defense Mission 2, which we now know probably doesn't have quite as much fuel, though it, th it doesn't have too little compared to our new mission. Um, but our new mission has a lot of buffer for intercept. What the heck kind of maneuver was I plotting here? Huh. Well, it's ended up being a Eve encounter plot, which is probably not right at all. So let's target the asteroid that's coming in and see... See what kind of intercept we would be able to do. This is just so that I can figure out what I might need to do for the intermission. Now, looks like the ascending node is over here. And... Yeah, that wouldn't be too far off from where... Okay, so... It looks like if we launch from... From the KSC, we should be heading south. To get the right orbit. Yeah? Or we could just wait a bit for... Uh, yeah, we should probably wait a bit for Kerbin to rotate to this point and then launch south. Um, let's see. Like so. Okay. And then we'll be pretty much in the plane of the asteroid coming in. Well, this is pretty hefty just for an inclination correction and a little bit of a boost here. Intersect 2. Okay, well this is Intersect 2 and it's over there at Intersect 2. Let's say I boost up further. Okay, well, let's not mess with this one. I'm not quite getting it here. But I'm somewhat confident that at least what we need to do is launch when the KSC is at this point and go south by 33, let's say 34 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna time warp here now. Okay, it occurred to me that we could probably launch at the descending node and that'll be quicker and time is of the essence. So, I'm gonna try and launch now and I think the KSC is close. I can't really see it because it's got to be on the dark side. It's got to be a nighttime launch, and sorry about that, folks. But uh, we need to get this mission off and running. So I think uh, the continent should be around here, so it should be close enough. We're going to head north instead of south. We're going to head north uh, 34 degrees, so we're going to be aiming for 56 degrees on the nav ball. And we should be going in the right direction for the asteroid going around like this. Okay, that is our plan. Uh, let's get the new asteroid defense mission out to the launch pad. Okay, here we are, and for this highly experimental mission, we've got Mac and Kerman. So, SAS on. Oh boy, why does this look a little bit skewed already? And I noticed that the uh, Marker isn't really pointing north. I mean, not north, uh, up or down. Um, okay. Alright, Mackin. I guess we're going to give it a go. Is that... No, well, I guess that's about right for the mod propellant. These are the parachutes on the top of these, yeah, okay. All right, well, here goes nothing.
the roar of 45 rockets getting Mac and Kerman very quickly off the ground here while we're on the straight up the ascent I'm going to target our asteroid our nemesis if you will got a bit of a worrisome rotation here I mean uh, around the vehicle's axis rather than the gravity turn The rotation is problematic for the booster separation and I can't quite stop this rotation. Could try and turn on RCS. Well, okay, it's a, I'm getting it. Okay. Booster separation is good. We're a go to continue. Let's see how our orbit is shaping up. Uh, descending node. Okay, uh, 10.6 and going down. 10.5. Okay, that's good. Sorry for the lack of commentary, by the way. This is a new launcher for me, and so I'm a little bit tense about the whole thing. I'll make sure everything works out. Okay, getting ready for the first cutout. And let's cut it there. We'll close to apoapsis and also make some finer adjustments to our inclination. Uh, so we'll actually be making an inclination adjustment rather than... Uh, just an orbital boost. We need to boost our periapsis a bit though, otherwise it's going to be in the atmosphere. So let me do that. Well, let, let's let's figure out the inclination first. Okay, that looks like a minimal orbit right there. And there's no point uh, not being close into Kerbin and taking advantage of the Oberth effect uh, as long as we've got the our, our inclination all set up. The trouble is always the inclination adjustment because closer to Kerbin, inclination adjustments cost more, but closer to Kerbin, any boost to the orbit costs less. So as long as we've got our inclination all sorted out, we might as well stay close to Kerbin. So the way I figure it, uh, the fellow we've got in orbit right now, I forget his name, I, in 82, should probably be sent to the asteroid that we've already captured uh, so that he can do the surface samples on that one. But I don't know how much juice he needs for the inclination change and everything. So I'll have to take a look. Ah, uh, under acceleration. Okay, now we can go. Okay, so here we go. Oh, so our orbit, orbit is okay. Inclination at point one. All right. Well, I guess we'll have to do uh, deal with that. Target. Well. Let's see now. Let's uh, burn out of our ascending node and try that out. Okay, well the thing is, uh, it's nowhere near where... I mean, this is only a 5 hour to apoapsis orbit, so... I guess... I mean, it's not going to come in within that time. What's our... Okay, so it, it actually enters the Kerbin Sphere of Influence, has its Kerbin encounter at day 21 15 hours 
and so we'd have to go around a whole other time. But maybe we should boost our orbit now. Let's do that. Three hours for the whole orbit, perhaps. So what I'm going to do is probably I'm going to end this episode on getting Mac and Kermin an encounter with the asteroid, if I can. Nice bit of stately wobble in this rocket. Not totally wobbly, but still just wobbly enough to convince us to still Kerbal Space Program. Okay, that should be good enough. Ah, now we have some sort of marker here. Okay, I think we can work with this. Let's say from here I start messing with this a little bit more. Oh, maybe we can't... Hmm. I don't think a moon encounter would help, would it? Seriously doubt that. Okay, let's wait for the asteroid to come into the system. Clearly I'm not uh, getting a good enough read on this. So... But we'll keep out here. I don't want to go to the tracking station just in case I miss something. I really have to think about this. So, here, when we're over here, it's out there. Then we come all the way around, and it's here. And then we don't intersect it again. But it's only because we have two intersections plot already and there's no such thing as intersect three. It only gives you the next two intersections. Still too far out perhaps. But as it comes in, it's going to be really hard to try and capture it. Okay, well as, as horrible as it might be for the Kerbals, I think we're just going to have to wait until this thing enters our system. Okay, it is now in the Kerbin system. It's definitely slated to crash into us. We must deal with this. We've got our rockets. What we don't have is any way to encounter the bloody thing. Okay, I've thought about it for a bit and I've decided that what I want to do is intersect the object right here. And I'll do everything I can to make sure that that's where I intersect it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to time the rest of my orbit around that point instead of uh, around my periapsis. But I'm going to boost out my periapsis. And hopefully this is all going to help somehow. Otherwise, uh, let's face it, Kerbin is going to be in a lot of trouble. I do not know if this is the right way to do things. I'm winging it here. That's good enough. So we have this sort of point here. And right now, here is our closest approach. You can see its orbit and ours. This will be the closest point between us. But right now, it will be all the way over here. What if we delay our orbit a little bit? Uh, we reach escape velocity. That's not very helpful. Maybe we should just wait a little bit. Uh, we're still... What's our periapsis, please? Okay, still 90. Two hours. Maybe this is a little bit too close. Let me add another maneuver here to boost a little bit further. We have the fuel. Though whether we can push this particular asteroid around, I don't know. It is another D-class asteroid, by the way. 
Okay, well it sets intersect 1 here if I do this maneuver. So perhaps that's a good sign. Though it has target position out there. And it's a pretty wide orbit. That could be very dangerous. Eight hours already out there. This might not be the best approach at all. Uh, if we time it exactly, if we can get these guys into it. They're not really acting like they want to go in there. So in one day and two hours, it's going to be here. Okay. In that case, let's go around once. This is so dicey. I don't like this at all. I mean, look at it. It's coming in. Okay, okay, okay. We need to plan here. Attacking like this is the only possible place I'm ever going to intercept it. I so don't like that idea. Okay, I think we have a breakthrough here. We've got the intersect one and intersect one on the same side. This is a huge multi... I mean, well, it's been a long time trying to get this. Okay, and we better not pass the point. All right, um... Let's see. I hesitate to even tweak it a little, but oh, there it goes. Well, I'm gonna definitely do this burn to get this much. Otherwise, I, I have no hope of ever encountering this asteroid at all. So, uh, let's do this burn in 10 minutes. And then we'll have to figure out what to do after that. And whatever we have to do, we have to do it by the time we get there. Somewhere between here and there, we need to figure out how to time ourselves so that we can intercept that asteroid. We have to go slower, because it's going to be still out here when we get there. So we just have to slow ourselves down. Which means a uh, wider orbit. Now... Where am I supposed to point? How does our craft look? Our electric charge seems to be holding out, uh, probably because of the always open solar panels. I guess we should, just for the show of it, open our our auxiliary solar panels, but probably not necessary. Soon we will be soon we will be able to ditch this large stage. And that'll be good, we won't have all these wobbles to deal with. Hope our peri- well, you know, at this point it doesn't really matter if our periapsis drops to weird- or increases to weird levels. On this outward leg we have to encounter the asteroid. Okay, well we have the two intersect points as indicated. Let's make finer adjustments now. Okay, I think I've got the rhythm of it. Yeah, okay. Aha. Okay. 
Okay, that's passed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, even with the fine tuning with my scroll wheel, it's not getting better than 7.3. I'll take 7.6. Let me try and perhaps the inclination. Oh, that was bad. The probability that I can do this maneuver well enough to really hit this is pretty low. Well, for a lot of that time, I was worried that we wouldn't get any sort of encounter at all. Seems like I'll have to review this particular pattern so I don't have to take quite as long in the future to find a maneuver. It's particularly the ones that are crashing into the curb in there are a little bit difficult because you have to get them on their way in rather than obviously they don't have a way out. Okay, well let's do this boost. Hopefully get rid of this huge stage and then then we'll say that Mac and Kerman is on his way to the asteroid to help save potentially save Kerbal lives if the asteroid does any damage on Kerbin. And let me clarify, that's just a conceit of the storyline. Uh, so far, asteroids in KSP do not actually destroy things, but uh, we, we, we are pretending certain things here. So that's just going to happen. Well, on the bright side, it looks like we're going to be intersecting this thing a safe distance away from Kerbin. That's a definite positive. Okay, that stage is out. Uh, have I staged things improperly here? I'm missing... Okay, that engine should be down here now. Right. Right. No, no, you don't give me any check mark. We've got to get this to that two kilometer thing. Okay, well, point zero or so. 20 kilometers. That is not good enough, folks. We do not settle for such numbers. Oh! Well, that was a surprise. Uh, 1.6 and uh, 0.5 meter per second adjustments. Wow. I think maybe just turning around might, uh, might do the trick at this point, but... Uh, we'll definitely be using mod propellant for this. Okay, well, a little bit indecisive, but it looks like we're in the single digit range on the distance. And I think I'm going to call an episode here. We've definitely got our mission out there. It's separated from its stage, and it's now just uh, just a portion we expected to be sending out. Drawing fuel from this these tanks now. And everything looks good. Mac and Kerman might be able to save us from a potential asteroid impact, but we'll find out in the next episode whether he's actually successful or not. Until then, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this ep episode, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.